A couple of weeks ago, we were right here where we were unable to actually cross on this side. Yes, that's why I had to take this side, just for you to see. That's the side where there was a problem. Because on the other end, is something else, and over there, things were working out. But today, we're here to talk about the symbolism behind it being opened and hearing from none other than Louis Mustenton, who has something to tell us. How are you feeling? What does this symbolize to you today on June 4th? Well, listen, contrary to some people who announce uh, with gladness, hey, the battle is finally open, I do not subscribe to that position. I am angry. Uh, I'm disturbed by the fact that people give it a thought, a con serious consideration that we, yes, the border should be closed. Okay? I did not subscribe to that. And Is I'm, that a general sentiment or you? Well, that's, I am given my sentiment, my so feeling on, on, on it. Yes. I and, you and, that people and people, and I'm getting to that. Not only is was my, it is my feeling, but speaking to the common man on the street, the senior citizen who is now on pension, or who cannot have access to the South with their doctor card, to collect their pension money at the end of the month, to go to the doctor, like I just said, to uh, be able to function, go to their bank. People told me all their life they work, on, they work in the South, their whole banking business is in the South, and they into the modern way of doing things with their card and everything online banking. They got to go to the bank with their card and do their business. So for the time that this border was closed, people have suffered. St. Martin people have suffered. What, make it, what bothers me the most is that when you understand that in the South, the Council of Ministers come to that understanding that are, the people are hurting, one, and most importantly, the indicators as far as the sanitary measures were concerned showed that uh, the, 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 the virus has been contained and that there's, the, the spreading of it is now under control somewhat. So they said, rightfully, that there's no justification to maintain the border closure. So I was in fully, and I commended them for taking that a bold step to open up the border, for at least from their side, and let it be free to circulate as it is a customary uh, practice on the, con in the, on the island. But here we are, on the other hand, now we had this high-handed approach, this neo-colonialist approach, where the state representative decided, no, it will be maintained uh, for whatever argument. But like I said, the end of- Sanitary arguments. Well, to me, they didn't stand one dime. And my book, you know, the argument doesn't hold water. Yeah. From the simple fact that when you people apply to the prefecture for a document, they give their narrative, the reason why they want this document to be able to go to the southern side. But it doesn't say that you have to be tested. They just give you a paper because the narrative was convincing, so they approve you. But it doesn't say that me, who applied for it, would not have access to the south, and I'm not taking the virus with me in the south, because I'm not tested. I'm just getting a document to confirm that, yes, the prefect authorized me to go. So that you're not controlling the spreading of the virus that way. So that's why I said it was useless, unjustified. And again, I refer to the fact that it was a so high-handed... So for you, this was an abuse of power? An abuse of power, a neo-colonist approach where they use the profit of a situation so to make sure, to make sure that she get a message out that yeah, in front here, there is a physical border. Whereas in truth and in fact, this is a symbolic monument erected in 1948 by the late Constant Fleming, yeah. by the late Constant Fleming, to show that here's where the separation is. But it never manifested into a, a physical border where people were controlled uh, and had to present documents to go from one side or to the other. In line with the spirit of the treaty, uh, Freedom of movement, freedom of goods, is a customary practice on the island of St. Martin. And it has been proven... Possibly because it, you talked about an abuse of power, yet mm. we're not in court. It's an abuse of power, yet we were complicit. Because in the end, we weren't saying 
we were saying, okay, fine, we understand from the get-go. And then we called it an amicable or friendly control. No, they, though, let's say that authorities, right. but the people never conceive it in that way. In the beginning, people went along with the idea somewhat that, okay, it will last for a few days, it will just keep stabilize the situation. But like I said, uh, from the moment that in the South, they felt that it was no, non, no longer justified, and they take the decision to lift it, and we didn't get the same reaction on the, on the northern side, it gives it a different turn, a different tone, as a Frenchman would say. And that is why I talk about neo-colonialist attitude, because it's to say the French side exists, and I am in control of the French side. And this is what I'm denouncing here. Yes, you're quite right. There could have been an approach towards the, the administrative court. I made that attempt, but um, I contacted a lawyer to question that decision in the court, the whole and the order, the RIT prefectural, to have it uh, annulled by the court of law. Um, but technically, he said that if a date was announced for the lifting of it, which was the, tw the, the 2nd of June, then maybe the court case was not necessary yeah. at the time. But wasn't so, it, the, the point was, was it to identify the abuse of power yeah. or was it to just get the body lifted? Well, it was both. Mm. It was both. The principle of it, that it was an abuse of power and at the same time to ease the pain of the common citizen who really felt hurt. There are people going through over there on that side, mm. um, the, the hill, because they, they have to get over at all costs, because that's that their whole life is based over there. Okay? So they had to get cars. So they did that and that was sad. When I learned of that story, I was very much saddened by it. Because this is not a practice that we know of. Yeah. At the time when you had to walk through the hill because it was most convenient there was not a road, there were shortcuts through the hills. Yeah. That I can subscribe to. But not in modern times when there's roads and whatever. It means to get by and you still have to go through the hill because the, the state authority have decided to impose uh, the closure. And so, that is so very disturbing to me. What's the main lesson that you took away as an elected official and a, a, a territorial councillor? Because in the end, I guess you were not in favor of it. You all let the majority know. The majority for the most maybe was not in favor of it, but basically was quote unquote helpless. Couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. That is what is very disturbing, the helpless situation in which we find ourselves. Helpless because, too, you had a president, I read from the start, fold his hands. He said he didn't do that. And he didn't, well, he would say all kind of things. But the truth, in fact, is that's what, how it is perceived. He fold his hands and he allowed the prefect to manage the situation. Okay? And that, to me, when you're in a position of leadership, that's the last thing you're supposed to be doing. Folding your hands, you mean dumb, dumb in the sense of you're mute, you're mute, you can't say anything, and you let matters unfold. No, you have to be proactive. You make decisions because you, that's Let's what you elected. For the sake of balance, that the original decision or the intention came yes. from Great Bay. Yes, I'm not disputing that. Yeah. In that other, that's what I said. Move, move past that mistake made by our, our counterparts in the South. I am now referring to the decision that the authorities, the state authority on the northern side, choose to assume solely. That's the that's where we are at right now. And I was very much disturbed by the president's attitude because I called him on the phone and I said, why don't we present a motion? Because we discussed that in the session, the closed door session that we had, the idea of a motion, and he said that Presenting a motion is useless at this stage because he indicated to the minister in a letter that uh, the council is, in a, is not in agreement with the, the decision. But given the attitude of the, 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 the prefect, the, the, the motion, to me, after analyzing the situation, was more than necessary to at least show the world that we as an elected body take a unanimous decision to condemn the attitude of the state. But in the end, it's still symbolic. It is still symbolic, but it has a lot of meaning to the, the, the Senmat now who was looking to leadership okay. to assert a clear position, to say, state exactly where they, where they, where they stand. Mm -hmm. Now, learning, and I would, I could, maybe I could be wrong, but I learned yesterday 
that one of the reasons why the, the president was kind of dormant or mute on the whole issue or didn't want to be more forceful or couldn't be more forceful because the tent which were used by the gendarmes are the collectivity's tent. I learned about that. Now I'll, we could contradict it. I'm open to that. I don't have the proof. But I learned that the tent used by the gendarmes were the collectivity's tent. Okay? So in other words, he was an active participant in this whole organization. And that is wrong. You can't give the people an impression that you're against, then behind the door, you know, you have a different attitude. You so cooperate, you collaborate. So he maneuvered his way within the, the, the crisis to support and maybe telling one side one thing and telling the other side one other thing. Let me put it this way. The pre our president is very, is very much known for that. Saying one thing to the people and then behind closed doors is a different maneuver. Make the people feel that he's so much in favor, with, uh, you know, in sympathy. He showed that empathy. I have your back. I understand your feelings. But once you get now in a setting where there's a state authority, he behaves differently. Collaborate with them. Give them whatever they, they request is requested of him. That is unacceptable. You, that's, a, that's a double standard. Okay. And I, I'm not in favor of those kind of positions. Let's close you're either it. in or you're out. Let's close it with the, the, the St. Martin Congress. I know that um, you know, um, the question was asked and the position of the president of the collectivity to date is that, you know, that they have not been able to work really on it because the one meeting that was scheduled was in October 2019 but it had been cancelled. So here we are in our third year of the mandate. We managed to get a date for a meeting in October 2019. Not in 17 because I guess you know Ilma was a problem then. Mm -hmm. Not in 2018 because maybe we were dealing with other things. But in 2019 when that was set up, uh, it hadn't been, um, it wasn't executed. And here we are in 2020, we're in June and i'm trying to figure out is there a reason why the so-called congress cannot see a day daylight or cannot be created what does great base government fall in or anybody going independent in the territorial council has to do with political continuity yeah great 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 response uh, at least uh, observation i'm saying we have to be truthful in, in, in terms of being leadership, playing our leadership role. You can't be playing games with the people. I agree with the philosophy, the idea of having a, a body, call it a joint congress, a condominium, whatever you want, to, the term is not the point. Is that, is the basis for it is, 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 is there. In the sense that you need a body where we can have member, elected members on both sides would sit in this institution uh, yeah, and work out differences and solutions or problematic situations that involve both, both, both sides of the island. To me, it's, 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 it's a step in the right direction. But let it be known, it is a collectivity responsibility, so it rests on the president's shoulder to show leadership in this regard. There was never, for the last three years, a meeting, okay, there are circumstances, but there was never a period of time when there was that possibility to present itself to organize at least a first meeting to say, here's my proposal. I, I am envisaging the creation of a, a Congress. What is your uh, response to it? How do you all look at it in the South? There was never a moment when this happened. You don't think as a candidate, I mean, m many of you have uh, championed that idea. Yeah. And so you're, are it, you telling me that all these candidates, including yourself, Y'all do not have a draft ready to discuss no, this no, discussion? No, 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 that's, that's honest. no. But here's the thing, it has a, a issue of such magnitude, has more weight when it comes from the president in office. Okay, and that is why I'm saying three years has passed and there was never a moment. Despite the ups and downs in Great Bay, there's still a continuity of the administrative services and there were interim governments here and there in place that could at least consider 
and a, a negotiation, even though it has to be put on hold till a permanent government is in place, but at least start the process. At least a deliberation in a council, because they still have to go to the national level to get approval of the, the French parliament on the issue. So none of those uh, process was engaged or even considered. So to me, it's, it's, it's useless, uh, and that's why I, call, I talk about a demagogy, to today come out and say that if it was in place, uh, yes, it could have bring about a meaningful solution to the, to the whole sanitary crisis. But at what given moment that a process was initiated, initiated by him, by he as leader of, of the country. So that's what I'm saying. I condemn the attitude. I agree with the principle, but I condemn the behavior to say, because it wasn't in place, it didn't happen. Who are you blaming here? Yeah. Who are you pointing fingers at in this regard? Because yeah. you are the one who's supposed to lead the way there, and that didn't happen. Okay. Are you going to initiate something as a, an opposition leader in, the, in that no, direction? No, it, it will How? not. I could only go mind him. Okay. How critical it is in, in this whole pandemic crisis, uh, reveal, bring to light the importance of having it done. So if you really determined or serious about the, 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 the project, then let's get the process started. That's what I'm saying. So, Mr. Mussington, the chapter of the border closure is now officially over because it's open. It's yeah. open. Where do we go from here? What do you no, need for, to for, for, first, to first and foremost, I want to say that we as a people, we have a moral obligation and a duty in honor of the ancestors who fought for the freedom of, uh, uh, in this country. We have that obligation to make sure that in the future, irregardless of the situation, to never allow any of the authorities, whether it's in the north or whether it's in the south, to consider the idea of closing our border. Our, 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 our we are uh, our sis, uh, sis, sister Siamese, uh, how the term is, we are twins. Okay? One side depends on the other side. Although we would politically, we yeah. know that there are two some administrative, politicians yeah. would have loved a true and clear separation. There are those who are to think, especially those coming from France, who just come from France, with a colonialist, a neo-colonialist approach, would like to see a border erected. And that is why the prefect entertained the idea, because she's, she has that mindset. That's what is the most convenient thing to do for St. Martin. To make, and here's the thing, people told me, when they got there, they were told, if you're on the French side, you're living on the, on the northern side, then put on a, a, a number plate from the French side. Come on. I mean, this How we get there? You do not know anything of the past of this country. And you are in contrast with Article 6311 of our organic law, which says that the state, uh, the, the republic, recognizes our specific situations from a historic, cultural, and geographic uh, uh, standpoint. So you ought to place your disrespectful towards St. Matt, not to tell him, put on a French number plate, or a shop on the, on, a shop on, on the French side and this kind of nonsense. We have always been a free people to shop, to sleep, to circulate wherever we see it fit to do. And those freedom, uh, uh, you know, that's those privileges that we have enjoyed as a people of St. Martin must not be put back in question at no given moment. It's unacceptable. So therefore, when we see this kind of mindset show their ugly face in our country, we have a moral responsibility towards our ancestors to stand up boldly and to condemn. Thank you, Mr. Mosleton. Last words? Last words yeah, is to say that something is in the making, but that will be revealed at a later date. You have secrets now, Mr. Mosleton. It's not that, but <laughs> the organizers will come to the, bring it to, the, to light. You know, I am supporting the cars, All but right. they will bring it clearly on, on the front burner so everyone will know and be present whenever that moment presents itself. Thank you, Mr. Mustington. Nice Pleasure has been mine. Pleasure has been.